Hello everyone, we are now at the second lesson on how to locate a lesion on mammography images. We saw in the first lesson how difficult it actually is to locate exactly a lesion and also how it appears and therefore the degree of suspicion of that lesion is related to the quality of the breast radiographer's work. Last lesson, we showed a few examples of lesions that can be a target for further study or callbacks, which will be described in more detail in lesson 3. Today's topic concerns systems with which spatial information can be derived from images. The first that we'll be talking about is the subdivision into quadrants thanks to the virtual application of two planes orthogonal to each other, the median sagittal and median axial planes centered on the nipple, which divide the breast in four parts, plus the axillary tail, according to a coronal view. There is a further subdivision, the ultrasound one, which divides the breast anterior posteriorly and superior inferiorly in three parts. As I often emphasized in my lectures, it is extremely important to be able to relate the images produced to the anatomical reality to assess whether the deep planes have been documented as extensively as possible, we speak of the PNL, posterior nipple line. What's important is the midline, which coincides with the PNL and the media sagittal plane, and the case that the inner and the outer quadrants are of the same size. Having said that, what does triangulation actually mean? It is a series of techniques by which spatial information, that is to say where a lesion is located, can be obtained by converging measurements from two other points. This is in theory. It must be remembered that no single projection taken individually can document the all breast ever. Okay? That each quadrant is represented in a different way depending on the projection. That the nipple, despite being mobile, sometimes very mobile in reality, becomes on the image a fixed point of reference of fundamental importance. In the CC projection, we know very well that the superior and inferior quadrants overlap each other according to the direction of the beam. So, the only information that can really be obtained is in the lateral, lateral sense. So, what we can say observing a well-performed CC is if the lesion is located in the outer or central or inner quadrant. From the MLO, leaving aside for the moment that is performed with the tube angled, it is the medial and lateral quadrants that overlap each other. So, the all information that we can draw is uh, in the superior inferior direction, whether the lesion is in the superior or central or inferior quadrants, I mean. I demonstrate here. Uh, with this rather simple drawing, how a lesion appears at different points depending on the projection. This subdivision is a topographical type. Very simple, I repeat, nine points. E is the nipple, and the lesion is at point C. It is the right breast. Well, from the CC, we can only say that the lesion is, in this case, in the inner quadrant. From the below, we see uh, that is in the central quadrant, it projects in the same line as the nipple. But is this one the real spatial information? No, it is not. And it is because of the angulation of the beam. To get a real upper-lower direction information, I have to resort to the lateral projection. Even if, again, we have the superimposition of the medial side on the lateral one, it is a medial lateral projection, you see. The same lesion that was seen central in the MLO is actually in the upper quadrant.
This method was once called the straight line triangulation. Let us consider the case of the central lesion on MLO. And that we see, as in the example I've just shown you, in the superior quadrant in a ML projection. Well, drawing a line, drawing the two findings up to the CC, considering that in the CC that finding cannot be seen, where well, we can be certain that it must be looked for in the inner quadrant. Uh, if I would see the lesion in the lateral projection in the inferior quadrant, then I could be certain of its present in the outer quadrant in the CC. That is to say, the lesion that in the below projection was seen in the middle goes up or goes down in the lateral projection depending on where it is in the CC. More exactly, the lateral lesion in CC goes down in the lateral projection. The medial lesion in CC goes up in the lateral projection. As you have seen, another system is often used to locate a lesion, the one according to the hands of the clock. Simpler to uh, understand by looking at the breast in the coronal plane, it becomes more difficult if we consider the usual mammography layout. It is not possible to project the coronal plane onto the image, as you know, um, and two planes are needed to get all the necessary spatial information. Let me show you, then, a very simple animation on how you can switch from the coronal view to the CC layout. The image is folded on the line join 3 and 9 o'clock on itself. You see? There is an overlap of the hours, that is to say, an overlap of superior and inferior quadrant. I know for certain that the purple dots here are located in the outer quadrant, the white ones in the central, the yellow ones in the inner quadrant, but I cannot say if they are located in the upper or lower quadrant. The same thing happens with the MLO projection with the added complication of the beam angulation, there is no exact overlapping of the medial and lateral points, and this prevents correct information in the superior and inferior direction. So you see, in the typical layout of MLO, how it gets really complicated. I can say that some points are definitely located superiorly, some points are uh, located inferiorly, but not for all of them. The obliquity of the bean is in any way essential to be able to document deeper tissue, but you lose, because of that, topographical reality. This is why lateral projection must be used to get spatial information, real spatial information. Here again, as in CC, the overlapping of the points is exact. This time, it is the medial and lateral points. This is the layout of the lateral projection. As you can see, it is much more understandable than that of the mellow projection. Therefore, having the two standard projection plus the, the lateral projection one, it is possible to locate a lesion exactly. From the lateral uh, projection, I know that the finding is, in this case, in the upper quadrant, but I don't know if it is medial or lateral. Question solved by the CC. The lesion in this case is therefore located at 2 o'clock. Well then, we close the session at this point. In the next and last of this series, we will talk about uh, callbacks, what they are and how they are conducted. Thank you and see you soon.